Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Can Fight Biopharma. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange American under the symbol CANF and is an advanced clinical stage drug development company with a platform technology that is designed to address multi billion dollar markets in the treatment of cancer, liver, and inflammatory disease. Please welcome its COO and CFO, Moti Farbstein. Nice to see you, Moti. Nice to see you. Thank today. you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for the opportunity to present at uh, your conference. Uh, that's the uh, forward looking statement. And I will jump to the uh, presentation. So, Canfat is an advanced clinical stage um, company. We have small molecule drugs uh, to treat inflammatory and cancer indication. Uh, we have a robust clinical proof of concept um, following a phase two and phase three studies, and the technology is covered by 15 patent families. Um, the business model is to license out, and as of today, we have successful out licensing deals that infuse more than $20 million to the company, an additional uh, $130 million, uh, we will get based on um, development milestone, regulatory approvals, and by the end, we will get double digit royalties from the net sales. Uh, we are duly traded at the New York Stock Exchange and Tel Aviv uh, using ADR as a tool. And uh, last financials, we had $12.4 million in our bank. Um, we started actually uh, the technology back at the university from basic research of our chairman, uh, Professor Nina Fishman. And um, we are targeting a unique uh, target. It's the adenosine receptor. Um, it's the, actually the A3 adenosine receptor. It's the green spiral that you can find on the control on the right, and you can see that you can find it uh, only on the pathological cells and not on the normal cells. Uh, and we are a global leader on uh, this target. Uh, all our pipeline drugs are bind only to the pathological cells, but not the normal cells, as they do not have the uh, target. Our drug are small molecules only by available drugs. Uh, it's proven therapeutic effect, high efficacy and good safety with anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer effect demonstrated in our studies. And we have an excellent uh, safety profile demonstrated in uh, more than 1,500 patients. Uh, we have two um, drugs in the clinic. Uh, the first one is peak libenzone for psoriasis. And um, following a positive uh, phase 3 studies, study, uh, we are now heading into a pivotal phase 3 study that uh, recently uh, cleared by the FDA, FDA and the EMA. The second drug is namodenzone. Uh, we have liver cancer uh, for uh, patients who do not have any other alternative. And there is an open, ongoing pivotal phase 3 study in the US and Europe. Um, we are now in the preparatory work for a phase 2A in pancreatic cancer. I will talk about it later. And we have a program also uh, for NASH, where there is an ongoing phase 2B study uh, in, the, in Europe and um, Israel. And we are going to find an IND and continue and add some sites in uh, the US. Uh, on top of it, we have two preclinical programs. Uh, the first one is CF602 for erectile dysfunction. And when we have cannabinoids, I will talk about it later if there will be time uh, in my presentation. Um, the business model is to license out. We see ourselves as a company who knows how to uh, bring uh, an idea from the uh, bench uh, to the clinic. And um, as of today, we have six uh, territorial partners. Uh, as you can see in the map, we have a company in, in Canada that took psoriasis. We have uh, two companies that took our drugs to some countries in Europe, mainly um, Eastern Europe. Uh, we have a partner, CMS, that took our drugs uh, to China and, to, and the territories. And we have also uh, two uh, partners in South Korea. As I mentioned before, uh, we got undiluted $20 million from these deals, um, and we should get $130 million. It's potentially based on regulatory and sales milestones. And on, on top of it, uh, there will be two double digits royalties uh, from the net sales. 
Uh, we go briefly now um, on the uh, drugs in the pipeline, and I will start with speaking demos on photosorizes. Um, we share the um, phase three positive data by the end of last year. Uh, we compare our drug, uh, as you can see in the uh, slide, uh, to two uh, dose group of picking benozone and uh, compare it to Otesla of Amgen and Placebo. Um, the study name, was Com and name is Comfort. So, in Comfort, Fetri study made the primary endpoint, which was the superi superiority uh, versus placebo on week 16. As you can see in the graph, we looked at the positive 75. Uh, the Fetri shows although the patients see improving progressive response over time. Um, demonstrated excellent safety profile. Uh, the safety profile of the uh, our treated patient is, was overlapped with the one of the placebo treated group. And we had, we had better safety profile than the Tesla. And um, as of today, we received a go ahead from the FDA and the EMA uh, for our registration plan of treatment denosal for psoriasis, uh, which will include two pivotal phase three studies that we will conduct in parallel. The second drug in the, cl in the clinic is Namodenozone for liver cancer, pancreatic, and mesh. And I want to share with you, sorry, I want to share with you um, one patient from our uh, former phase two study. Uh, this patient uh, was enrolled to the study. And as of today, till today, it's actually six and a half years. This patient is continuing treated with Namodenozone, other an open level extension program in Europe. Uh, this patient um, had a complete, uh, complete response, complete cleared of all the lesions, all the cancer lesions. And over the course of uh, six and a half years, the, cl the clinical benefits included disappearance of ascites, return to normal liver function, and disappearance of peritoneal carcinomatosis. Uh, based, based off uh, the phase two uh, data, there is now an open uh, phase three study, pivotal one. The name of the study is Liberation. And the FDA and the EMA agreed on the study protocol. There will be an interim analysis uh, by an independent data monitoring committee after 50% of the plan, 450 patients um, that we are planning to enroll to the study. Uh, the Namodenazone um, will be given as a second or third line treatment for advanced liver cancer patients, patients who uh, there's no other therapies or um, the third therapy that they uh, took before is no longer effective. The primary endpoint is uh, overall survival. Uh, we have orphan drug status uh, from the FDA and the EMA and a fast track status that was granted by the FDA. In addition, there is a contextual use program in two countries, uh, both in Israel and Romania. The second indication is the pancreatic cancer, and due to the good data of the liver cancer patient, we did some preclinical studies, and we showed that we reached 90% 90 inhibition in pancreatic cancer growth, where the molecular mechanism of action, which is the regulation of the wind, and inhibition of nf kappa b signaling pathways. Um, and we are now uh, planning and preparing a phase uh, 2A study. Uh, we are going to do a second line therapy, an open label, uh, using the same dose, 25 milligram, as the liver cancer patient. And the efficacy endpoint will include objective response, uh, progressive free survival, duration of response, Overall survival and, of course, uh, the safety. Uh, in addition, we are now in the process of uh, submitting an IND to the FDA and we will open all sites in the US. On top of it, we have a program with NASH, it's a non alcoholic steatosis hepatitis on, or non alcoholic fatty uh, liver. It's accumulation of uh, fat in the liver. And not due to alcohol consumption. Uh, there is unmet need and there is no FDA uh, approved uh, treatment as of today. Uh, we concluded the phase 2A study successfully. Uh, we showed that we reduced the liver fat content in the liver, uh, anti inflammatory effect. We chose the dose, decreased the body weight of the patient who took lamodenosone, and we had an excellent safety. 
And following the phase 2A, there is now an open phase 2B study. It's a multi center randomized double blind placebo controlled study in 140 subjects with biopsy confirmed mesh. Uh, the patients will be randomized in uh, 2 to 1. Uh, toward the nanodenosome versus the placebo. Uh, we will follow the patients uh, till 36 weeks, and the primary efficacy endpoint uh, will be determined by the liver biopsy at week 36. Uh, the CF602 for record dysfunction. And you can ask me, Anna, why we are developing it, but we find it uh, as a serendipity. Uh, we have an, an anecdotal report for, from a patient and physician that was treated uh, with our drug, both women and men, testifying that the drug reversed their sexual dysfunction. Um, so we have another molecule it's called CF602 um, that we took into uh, some preclinical study and showed that the activity of CF602 is a significant full recovery from erectile dysfunction. In the diabetic red model, we can use it as a topically or a systemic agent. It's dose dependent, we have a linear effect, and the response uh, in the model was after single dose of six, uh, CF602. Um, we have the mechanism of action, and um, as of today, I can tell you that um, we are not um, developing uh, more resources to develop it, but uh, looking and talking to potential partners uh, for the erectile dysfunction in the patient. Uh, the last indication that we have is uh, cannabinoids, and the rationale was that uh, we found out that the cannabinoids are known to bind also uh, to our target, the A3 adenosine receptor, and uh, mediate the clinical effect through the receptor. So, as of today, we have an assay to identify clinically active cannabinoids where we can select uh, the best. Um, active cannabinoids um, that will be good for um, liver cancer and liver fibrosis. Um, we have the intellectual property, uh, the market is huge, and the same with the uh, rectal dysfunction. We are talking and looking for a partner in the cannabinoids area. So, to summarize, uh, we have an oral drug with proven safety and efficacy in phase two and three. Um, the assets in phase 3 are for psoriasis in liver cancer. Uh, we also have a, a strong efficacy in MESH, and we are going to start uh, phase 2A in pancreatic cancer. Uh, we monetize advanced port uh, portfolio through corporate partnerships. Um, I talked about it. We are talking to, um, we are looking to find more partners. Um, it is a novel uh, therapeutic approach. It's a new, unique technology for the treatment of cancer, liver, and inflammatory disease, addressing multi billion dollar markets. Uh, the intellectual property portfolio consists of 15 uh, families and protects in different layers the indications and the drugs. And as of today, uh, the money that we have and the money that uh, we should get from uh, the partners, uh, we think that we are financially well positioned. We have enough money for at least 18 months from today. Thank you. Well, that happens to all of us. Sorry, Moti. Um, <laughs> you mentioned partners. Uh, would you like to explain a little bit more details what type of partners you're looking for? Yes, the, the partners of the... Um, we are looking for a partner that will um, take the drugs and we will give them the, the sales rights or the license uh, for a specific territory and a specific indication. Uh, as I showed, we had some small deals in Canada, a few countries in Europe, uh, China, South Korea, but the, but the US and the majority um, of Europe is open for deals, the same as South America. Uh, that's for the uh, picky denosone and nanodenosone, and, and as I mentioned before, uh, we are looking also for partners to partner the preclinical technologies, the rectal dysfunction, and the cannabinoids. 
Now we have a question from <clears throat> Nicholas Thompson it wants to know about your licensing deals. How many do you have and how are they structured? Okay. So I'll, I'll jump to the slide. It will be easier for me. So um, I'm back to the slide of the, our partners. So, um, and you can see there's a typical deal structure. It's on the um, middle down uh, of the study which consists of upfront money upon the signing of the distribution deal or licensing deal. And then there are regulatory marks on patients along with this, uh, the development of the drug deal registration. There's, there are royalties, uh, double digits, uh, as of today, between 10% to 23% from the net sales. And then there are sales marks on payment when you reach certain uh, amounts of sales per year. Um, you can see that we have um, on the map that we, in, in America, we have only Canada, a few countries in Europe, China, South Korea. So that's the type of deal that we are looking. And we think now that we are entering into two pivotal studies, um, both in psoriasis and liver cancer, that now it's a good time for us. And we are doing it talking to uh, potential partners and, and find them and bring, the, bring in, uh, them on board um, to help us develop uh, and sell the drugs. Question from Francisco Villa. What is the timeline for the namo Denson liver cancer clearing phase three? Okay, so we started to enroll patients recently. Um, <clears throat> we think that um, it will take us between 18 to um, 24 months to get into the uh, interim analysis. Interim analysis can be um, a good point for the company either to get a conditional approval or to continue the, uh, the study and get a good feedback uh, from the study. But that's about the um, timelines. We might be earlier, but I don't want to uh, give uh, too optimistic uh, um, timelines. And Deacon Levy asks, how far will your cash in the bank take you before you need to raise funds? So um, as of today, we have enough cash for the next 18 months. Uh, we do hope that the next cash that we will get will be uh, from, it will be uh, undiluted money from a new deal that we will get and not from the market. And Avery Kelly wants to know, when finding new partners, are they for technology, funding, or both? And can you explain how a deal would be structured? So the current, the current partners in the bank we are looking at uh, biopharmaceutical companies, pharma companies, they have the, they have the ability to sell the, uh, the drugs. Um, we know how to develop drugs. We are looking for partners who will be able to sell the drugs all over the world. And TR uh, wants to know an update on the picladenison treatment for PET osteoarthritis trial. Oh, okay. So I skipped this one that's uh, on the same slide that it presented. It's the company by the name of Red Biolics, the French company that took the rights to develop a uh, um, picladenison for, uh, for dogs, for us osteoarthritis, which is a major problem for dogs. Um, they are doing now the, um, the animal study. Uh, we are looking and waiting for the data, and once we will have it, we will share it with the public, I, I think with the next few months, but uh, it's up to the company, and I have to mention that uh, they are doing it on their own resources, and uh, we are going to benefit from it if it, if it will be positive. And Coop wants to know, how is your funding typically structured? Uh, as of today, mainly was uh, we kept the market uh, using our shelf, uh, reg registered the rate. That was the uh, structure of our recent deals. And Sage Bonilla asks, what is your most proprietary technology that would make you an attractive takeover candidate? Um, I think both the... With the liver cancer, we are treating patients who have no other alternative. Um, it's the, in a phase where either there is no drug approved for them or the drug that they are using is no longer um, benefit. They cannot benefit from it, mainly due to uh, liver toxicity. 
And due to our safety, uh, we are treating patients who have no other alternative. So that's the liver cancer patients, which is in the pivotal stage. And I can add also that the psoriasis one, uh, out, uh, there are many drugs on the market, um, but the psoriasis patients are getting the disease in our the 20s, 30s, 40s, and they need to take drug uh, all over their life, and they are looking for a safe, only by available drug uh, with an efficacy, and we bet, and we think that uh, there is a, a room in the market for a drug like uh, Iclutemazone for psoriasis patients. And Kale Paul asks, are the rising interest rates affecting business or funding at all? Um, not as of today, as we have enough money, I cannot predict what will be in the future. No one can. Well, yeah. this is great, yeah. great technology, great products. Do you want to give us some closing remarks for our viewers? Um, I can also say that, you know, we are a small company. Uh, the market cap is very small. Uh, we have two assets in phase three. We have partners. Um, and we need uh, a success, one success to be uh, in the market cap that uh, we think that we should be, not uh, where we are today. Uh, I'm sure that every company is saying the same. But um, I gave the presentation and look at the data, the assets, the market cap. And um, if you have more questions, I'll be very happy to answer. If not, thank you, Anna. Yes, one last question for you sure. from Jacob. Uh, do you release guidance? What, what type of guidance? Well, guidance on the stock. We have, uh, we share our press releases a lot. We are... Uh, um, Traded at the New York Stock Exchange, so we are filing all our cues and, 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 and everything that we need. So, uh, and if not, there's a, you, you always can approach the company and, and ask me whatever you want. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we certainly hope you come back on the conference in the future with some updates. Thank you, Anna. Thank you all right, much. thank you so much. Okay, everyone, we are sorry to inform you that our next presenter... Uh, will not be on today, Ride Bay. They're going to postpone their presentation, but we hope to see them on our August conference. We will be back with Bright Mountain Media at 1235 Eastern. We'll see you soon.